Hello, everyone, and welcome to English Pod. My name is Marco. My name is Catherine, and today we're going shopping for something. What are we going shopping for, Marco? That's right. Today we are buying pants, and、uh, we're going to try to see if we find a good pair of jeans. Yeah, sometimes pants are too small, sometimes they're too big. Let's try and find the right pair today. Excuse me, can I try on this pair of jeans? Sure, let me see. I'm afraid we don't have any size eights left. What are you talking about? I'm always a size four. Here, I'll try these. <coughs> They seem a bit too tight. Shall I find you a larger size? No, they fit fine. They show off my curves perfectly. Yeah, your love handles. <coughs> they sure do. Although, here, you forgot to close this button. Yeah, right. I'll do it now. All right, we're back. So now let's take a look at some vocab on language takeaway. Language takeaway. All right, so today on Language Takeaway, the first phrase we have is actually a verbal phrase. This is what we do when we go to find some clothes. We try on those clothes. That's right. So that is a, as you said, a verbal phrase. And to try on a pair of pants or to try on some clothes is to put them on and see if、uh, they are okay, if they're、uh, the right size. That's right. So if I'm in the store and I see a shirt that I really like, I go to the dressing room to try it on.、Mm -hmm. Or you could say, oh my gosh, Marco, come here. This shirt is great. You should try it on. That's right. So you try it on or you try on. Something. All right. So, as we said, we wanted to try on a pair of jeans. So, let's take a look at this connection of words pair of jeans. All right. So, you don't have a jeans, you have a pair of them. And this is because you have not one, but two legs. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. pair means two of something. That's right. So, it doesn't mean that you have two pants, right? It doesn't mean that you have two pieces of clothing. It means that you have one. Piece of clothing that's a pair of jeans. That's right. So you have one part for one leg and one part for another leg. The same is true of glasses because, you know, glasses are for your two eyes. That's right. So you have a pair of glasses. That's right. A pair of glasses, a pair of shoes. Also.、Mm -hmm. Okay. So we are trying on these、uh, pair of jeans, but they seem to be a bit too tight. All right, so tight is a word we use when something is too small. It's hard to move if something is too tight.、Mm -hmm. So maybe if the,、uh, the pants are too small, they might be too tight. Yeah, and,、uh, and we often say this, especially to girls.、Uh, my mom used to say this oh, no, you're not wearing that skirt. It's too tight.、Uh -huh. you, can see your, you can see your body underneath. Uh huh, okay. So actually, the opposite would be loose if something's too big. Too big. If it's too big, it's loose. If it's too small, it's tight. Okay. Now, if it's not too big and not too small, then that means. It fits. It fits, that's right. So I could say, I think I want to buy this pair of jeans. It fits very well.、Mm -hmm. So、mm -hmm. if the pants or the pair of jeans fit, it means they are okay for you. They're not too big, not too small. They're comfortable. Comfortable. And in this case, she said that they fit perfectly because they show off her curves. Now, what is she talking about? Uh, my curves? Well, a curve is something that's not straight, it bends.、Mm -hmm. But when we're talking about a, a person's curves, we're talking about maybe a woman's hips、mm -hmm. or her behind, her、uh -huh. rear end, or her chest.、Uh -huh. And so、um, women who have curves maybe are rounder, not flat. Uh huh, okay. So it's something that you usually you would use with、uh, girls, right? That,、uh, you know, a girl has nice curves. You wouldn't really say that for a guy, I think. No, guys, you don't really talk about curves. <laughs>、um, but with girls, usually you can see someone's curves if she wears tight clothes. Okay, very good. So why don't we take a break? Let's review all this vocab, and we'll be back in a bit with Fluency Builder. Excuse 
Excuse me, can I try on this pair of jeans? Sure, let me see. I'm afraid we don't have any size eights left. What are you talking about? I'm always a size four. Here, I'll try these. They seem a bit too tight. Shall I find you a larger size? No, they fit fine. They show off my curves perfectly. Yeah, your love handles. <coughs> they sure do. Although, here, you forgot to close this button. Yeah, right. I'll do it now. Uh. All right, now it's time for three phrases. Let's take a look at those on Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. All right, so we heard this phrase here, I'm afraid, and it means something maybe different from what you've heard before. So the shopkeeper said, I'm afraid we don't have any size eights left. That's right. So uh, when you start a sentence like this, you're basically apologizing a little bit, right? Yeah, it's like saying, I'm sorry, I don't think we have size eights left. Mm -hmm. So maybe I go into the store and I say, well, mm, I would like some chocolate milk, please. And I say, I'm sorry, I'm afraid we ran out of chocolate milk. I'm afraid we ran out. So this means it's too bad or unfortunately, we don't have any. That's right. Mm -hmm. So it's not the same being afraid like you're being you're scared <gasps> no it's not that afraid it's it's a polite way for usually a, a, a shopkeeper mm -hmm. to say i'm sorry we can't help you okay so going back to curves the girl used this uh, interesting phrasal verb there to show off all right so we know the word to show mm -hmm. um, but to show something off to show off means to display or exhibit it's almost like you're you want other people to look at you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so if um, I guess maybe you can see it on the street if someone is in their car and they're playing loud music kind of drawing attention to their car they're kind of showing off their car they want you to see their car or just hear how great sound system they have that's right or some women will wear very very short skirts because they want to show off their long legs that's right all right but now something that you don't really want to show off uh, are your love handles all right now this is a very funny phrase it's uh it's actually something we say in spoken english that mm -hmm. if you say it to someone else might be very rude uh -huh. uh, love handles are the part of your body above your waist that if you have a little fat mm -hmm. uh it's like it's like they're squishy you can touch them right so just think about um how maybe people that are a little bit overweight they put on a pair of pants and on their sides, in their waist, the extra skin that kind of is around the pants, that's, uh, that's called love handles. And we say love handles because when someone hu hugs you or they want to hold you, that's where they put their hands. There's extra to hold on to. Right. I think uh, sometimes they're even called, they may be called uh, like tires or something like this. Well, spare tire is in the front. It's uh -huh. near your belly. Uh -huh. All right. So that's called a spare tire. That's right. So a uh, spare tire is in the front. It's a belly. Normally when people drink a lot of beer, uh, very often they have a spare tire. Uh, but this is actually, love handles are on the sides. Um, mm -hmm. But that's our last word today. Let's, let's remember that it's not something you want to go around telling people they have, but you can joke with your friends about right, it. Right, exactly. <laughs> All right, so let's listen to the dialogue one last time. Excuse me, can I try on this pair of jeans? Sure, let me see. I'm afraid we don't have any size eights left. What are you talking about? I'm always a size four. Here, I'll try these. <coughs> they seem a bit too tight. Shall I find you a larger size? No, they fit fine. They show off my curves perfectly. Yeah, your love handles. <coughs> they sure do. Although, here, you forgot to close this button. Yeah, right. I'll do it now. Uh.
All right. So speaking about pants, uh, I've noticed something that uh, the girl asked for a size four, but she really was a size eight. So how does this work? Because as guys, we don't have size fours, five or ones or anything. We like you buy a pair of jeans, you say size 32 in the waist and size 30 in length or something like this. So that's right. Um, men's clothes usually uh, indicate the the size of your waist. So uh-huh. 32 is a 32 inch waist. Uh huh. But women's clothes don't have those measurements. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes think it would be better if we did, because it's very hard. Some stores have size four, which is one size. But if you go to another store, it's very different. So you Mm -hmm. always have to try on these clothes. Mm -hmm. Um, But normally in America, the sizes go from zero, which is the very, very smallest, Mm -hmm. to 14 or 16, which is the largest. Okay. A normal size for most women would be an eight. I think an eight or a ten. And now, obviously, this depends on the uh, the countries, uh, because, like, for example, being in Asia, in China, the women are usually a little bit thinner or smaller, mm-hmm. so um, it's harder. I think for uh, it's harder to actually have this universal form of uh, of measurements for for girls. That's right. So um, in the back of your pants, for example, there'll usually be some fabric, and it will say the size according to different countries. Uh, so yes. Um, in America, size six in China, size I don't know twenty eight, mm-hmm. um, and so they'll have the different numbers. And right. UK is also a different right, size, right, right. kind of like your shoes. If you look inside your shoe, it'll say I think a, a, a Japanese a size, the UK size, which is like 41, 42, and the USA size, which is like size eight or size nine. Eight, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, it's very, very interesting, especially when you're buying clothes, you have to remember what size you are and you have to ask the person to let you try it on because some things I know you can not try on, right? That's right. Uh, and in some stores, you have to ask for help to take things off the racks. So it can be very difficult. But normally, if you say, hey, can I try this on? The, sh- the shopkeeper will help you. Okay, great stuff. And of course, if you have any questions or you want to comment on this lesson or any of our lessons, you can find us at EnglishPod.com. We hope to see you all there. All right, bye. Bye. Hello, everyone, and welcome to English Pod. My name is Marco. My name is Catherine, and today we have an elementary level lesson all about going shopping. That's right. Today we are going with a guy to a shop, and he's buying a new suit. Okay, so lots of great words for men or for buying clothes for your husband or brother. Let's take a listen to today's dialogue. We'll be back in a moment. Hello, sir. What can I do for you today? Hello. I need a new suit. I have an important interview next week, so I really need to look sharp. No problem. We have a broad selection of suits, all tailor-made, so it will fit perfectly. Great. I want a three-piece suit, preferably made from Italian cashmere or wool. Very well, sir. Would you like to have some shirts made also? Sure. I'll also take some silver cufflinks and a pair of silk ties. Very good. Now, if you will accompany me, we can take your measurements and choose the patterns for your suit and shirts. All right, we're back. So a very simple dialogue about a guy needing a suit, and he talked to the tailor, apparently, about a couple of things. Now, uh, why don't we take a look at some of those words in Language Takeaway? Language Takeaway. Well, first of all, a tailor is a person who makes clothes. So in this case, a man who makes suits. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that we have to talk about is the kinds of suits that he has. He says, we have a broad selection of suits. Okay, so this adjective, broad, what does that mean? It means wide. You know, Mm -hmm. you can have a very broad street. That means many cars can fit across Mm -hmm. it. But in this case, we're talking about a selection. So that means a broad selection of suits, very, very many suits to choose from. Okay, so for example, if you go to a music store where they sell CDs and stuff like that, they might, they will have a broad selection of music. So you can have rap and hip-hop and R&B, etc. That's right. Or the iTunes store has a broad selection of music. You can choose basically anything. That's right. Okay. So we have a broad selection of suits. And uh, he said, well, great. I actually need a three-piece suit. 
Okay, so there are different kinds of suits. Some just have two pieces, like pants and a jacket. Mm -hmm. But the kind that the man wants is a three-piece suit. So that means there's a jacket, mm -hmm. pants, or trousers, some people might say, and a vest. Okay. So, yeah, you've probably seen this. They look very nice. Uh, basically, under or over your shirt, you wear a vest. And so, if you wear a vest with a suit, it's called a three-piece suit. You know who I'm thinking of right now who always wears three-piece suits? He's very famous. A football player, actually. Beckham? Yes. Really? Dave, David Beckham. I don't know if you guys watched the World Cup, but in the World Cup, David Beckham was always wearing a three-piece suit. Wow. And mm. that heat. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we have a three-piece suit. Now, we don't have a four-piece suit, do we? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't Maybe think so either. A tux, you have like the, the, in the, in, on your Sash. waist, the cummerbund. Oh, cummerbund, that's what it's called. Okay. Well, that's for a tuxedo. Now, uh, moving on, we talk about the materials of the suit. And he said, well, I preferably want something made from Italian cashmere or wool. Okay, so Italian is an adjective that describes things that come from Italy. Mm -hmm. And Italy is very famous for its fabrics and silk. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, we're talking about Italian wool. Cashmere is a very expensive, very soft kind of wool. Okay, and wool is basically a sort of material that comes from the, uh, from the sheep, mm -hmm. from the hair of the sheep. That's right. And so uh, different sheep, different animals have different kinds of wool mm -hmm. and uh, these have different prices so some are more expensive and some are cheaper cashmere is very expensive okay very good and so he also is offered uh, some shirts and he's like yeah sure i'll take some shirts and uh, i also need some silver cuff links okay so when you close your shirts by your by your wrist mm -hmm. you usually have a button or in some cases something a little bit more fancy mm -hmm. and when it's more fancy it's called a cuff link. Mm -hmm. Yes, you've probably seen it. It looks like a small uh, metal button that mm -hmm. you can remove from your shirt. So the, the it looks a lot better. It's kind of hard to explain, but just imagine on your wrist, you have a small metal button that you can uh, close your shirt uh, at the wrist. That's right. And some people have very, very fancy ones with special pictures. So you could have, for example, a car if you love cars or a, you know, uh, a diamond cufflink yes. with a diamond on it. That's right. In this case, he wants a cufflinks made of silver. And uh, also, he wants a pair of silk ties. Okay, so a pair of means two. He wants two different silk ties. Mm -hmm. And a tie is basically a um, is something that you, you put around your neck. Men wear these usually to the office. Mm -hmm. And uh, ones that are made of silk are usually more expensive. That's right. So a silk tie. And, uh, okay, so we've uh, pretty much covered everything that he needs. He wants a very nice suit with a lot of great accessories. Why don't we listen to the dialogue again, and we'll be back with Fluency Builder. Hello, sir. What can I do for you today? Hello. I need a new suit. I have an important interview next week, so I really need to look sharp. No problem. We have a broad selection of suits, all tailor-made, so it will fit perfectly. Great. I want a three-piece suit, preferably made from Italian cashmere or wool. Very well, sir. Would you like to have some shirts made also? Sure. i also take some silver cufflinks and a pair of silk ties. Very good. Now, if you will accompany me, we can take your measurements and choose the patterns for your suit and shirts. So in Fluency Builder today, we have three very useful phrases that you can say when you're with the tailor at the, at the store buying a suit. The first one is to look sharp. That's right. He says that he has a job interview and he wants to look sharp. Okay, so to look means to have the appearance of, but sharp, what does this mean? Basically, take it as a chunk or as a, as a phrase. And if you look sharp, it means you look smart, you look good, you look clean. You look uh, very nice. Mm. So this is normally something we say to men. Yeah. You look really sharp today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or um, I want him to look sharp. I'm going to buy him a nice silk tie. Mm -hmm. That's right. So to look sharp, as I said, to look very nice, very clean, very handsome. handsome. Okay, so looking sharp. And uh, well, when we were talking about the suit... 
the person mentioned that all the suits are tailor made. All right, this is a very important phrase if you want to go shopping for clothes that are made for you. So mm -hmm. something is tailor made if the sizes are made only for fitting you. That's right. Um, if you go to a department store and you buy a suit off of the the shelf or the rack, mm -hmm. it's not tailor made. But if the if the tailor makes it, he sews it to your size. Then it's tailor made. And, That's right. You know, wedding dresses are tailor made. Special suits are tailor made. Mm -hmm. So this is usually an expensive kind of clothing. Okay, so it basically means the tailor, the person, made it especially for you. That's right. And the opposite, as you said, would be off the rack. Off the rack, and this means that when you go to the store, you pick something, you like it, and you buy it. There's mm -hmm. no one going, no one is going to sew it to make it fit you. That's right. So this is actually how most of us get our clothes. You go to the department store, you get a pair of jeans, a t T-shirt, obviously, all that stuff is off the rack. It's not tailor made for your size. That's right. Okay. But if you wanted, if you really want to get something tailor made, you need to be able to talk to the tailor about it. And so he will usually say, "Let me take your measurements." Mm -hmm. This is our next phrase. That's right. The tailor mentioned that he wants to take him over there and take his measurements. So when when the tailor says, "I want to take your measurements," or "I need to take your measurements." What does that mean? That means I need to measure parts of your body to help make the suit. Mm -hmm. So he'll normally measure your shoulders, mm -hmm. your waist, your hips, and how long things will be. So your arms and your legs. Mm -hmm. And these are all important measurements to know how big or how small to make the suit. That's right. You want the tailor to take your measurements, or you can also say you have to get measured. That's right. So, to get measured or to take someone's measurements. These are key phrases for buying a tailor-made suit. Very good. Okay. Why don't we listen to our dialogue one last time, and we'll be back to talk some more. Hello, sir. What can I do for you today? Hello. I need a new suit. I have an important interview next week, so I really need to look sharp. No problem. We have a broad selection of suits, all tailor-made, so it will fit perfectly. Great. I want a three-piece suit, preferably made from Italian cashmere or wool. Very well, sir. Would you like to have some shirts made also? Sure. I also take some silver cufflinks and a pair of silk ties. Very good. Now, if you will accompany me, we can take your measurements and choose the patterns for your suit and shirts. So do you have any tailor-made suits, Marco? I actually don't. I have, haven't... Uh, w here to the office, I'd never wear a suit. We don't really need to wear no, yeah. suits all fancy. Um, and there, very, there have been very few occasions where I've needed a suit, so... I uh, I actually don't have a suit at the moment. Not even one. Not even Not one. Even I the left rack. them. I left them all at home, and uh, I, I just haven't used them. And probably they wouldn't fit anymore. This yeah. is the problem with getting things tailor made as well. The thing is, though, with a tailor made suit, usually it's made to get bigger or smaller. Mm -hmm. So maybe the shoulders and the arms are the same, but if you gain weight or you lose weight, the tailor can make those small, small changes. That's right. Actually, I would. Uh, I, I had a friend who got some tailor-made jeans, and I think that would be nice because sometimes, I don't know, jeans for me, they don't fit well. Yeah, me neither. There's a very famous company that does tailor-made jeans that I was thinking about going to because I hate buying jeans off the rack. Yeah, they usually don't fit either. The waist is too, if I need a bigger waist, but then everything is too baggy and it's it just doesn't look right or everything is too small. So I think this is a very interesting thing, although I don't know how expensive it would be because getting tailor-made clothes clothes is relatively expensive. It can be very expensive, although that's usually in America or in Europe. In places like India and China, I think it's much more common to have things made to fit you, mm -hmm. tailor-made. Mm -hmm. This is a very interesting subject, and actually, uh, we are wondering if maybe you know a tailor, you are a tailor, or you've gotten things tailor-made for you. Maybe you got married recently and you had a tailor-made tuxedo or a tailor-made wedding dress. That's right, so let us know. We can be found at EnglishPod.com. We hope to see you there. All right, bye guys. Bye.